Hey, it's April 9th, the day after the eclipse. And I can say for me, I had such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Just creating sacred space and feeling um, the energies move and shift and praying and meditating, making a sacred fire, grounding most of the day. It was just beautiful and I could feel the, um, the way I would explain it is like when, <laughs> um, not to sound so um, mystical, but it was literally like a portal opened, sucked out negative and dark energy and closed behind us. Or you could see it as when just a whole bunch of junk flows down the drain and goes away. That's what it was like for me. And I really felt like um, this was a, an opportunity to just mercifully receive grace for alchemizing new space for new energy of God to move in. And um, I know we all use this word shift a lot, but I just, I, I can feel shifting so much happening, just shifting, shifting, shifting everywhere, mercifully and gracefully happening in me, around me. Um, and uh, today, the day after the eclipse, Mars, and especially tomorrow, but Mars is on Saturn um, more prominently tomorrow. So is there anything blowing up after the eclipse for you? Is there anything blowing up? Um, and then I believe Thursday, Mercury will be with the sun. They call that Kazemi, but Mercury looks like mercy to me. And Mercury is the voice of the Holy Spirit, is the revelation, it is the exposure of things, it's the reveal, it's the um, chance to return, to renew, to review things. Um, but it's that information flow of the Holy Spirit for me. You can you don't have to use the word Holy Spirit or the, the name of Holy Spirit, but that's what it is for me. Um, but Mercury or Mercy is that flow of information, that voice, the capital V voice of God in me, my intuition, my core intuition of God in me, of the divine speaking to me, the Holy Spirit in me. And uh, Mercury is retrograde. So it's, um, in my opinion, if there's something blowing up today, um, Mercury is going to, well, the Holy Spirit is going to return us back to something and expose something of the past, review something of the past that has been wanting to come forth, to come out, to be exposed, to be revealed. What is apocalypse? Apocalypse means the great reveal, right? A revealing, the great revealing. That's all it means. I mean, for those of us that grew up in apocalyptic religion, doctrine, <laughs> We, um, and those of us that are deconstructing out of that, we're realizing that really apocalypse does mean the great reveal. And so we have this opportunity to allow our eyes to open so that we may see. That is what apocalypse means. It's the seeing, it's the awakening, it's the revealing so that we might have our I, I, the I am. opened to see what is being revealed and um it is a merciful beautiful reveal so but with that mars saturn and i've been talking about that mars saturn in pisces because pisces is the house of death of the spiritual of our unseen hidden enemies it can be the house of and i mean three people died this week that I know. And um, my great aunt always said it happens in threes. And after the second person died, I told my husband, one more person's going to die. And then I heard about another person dying today. So Pisces, yeah, a lot going on in Pisces. And we probably will see a lot of deaths as 
there's all this happening in Pisces, but also it is the house of um, creativity. So there's new creativity opening up. There's new innovative things opening. Um, innovation is also Aquarian. Overall, we're in an umbrella of the Aquarian energy, okay? Because we're in the Aquarian age now. And I'm excited about that. And I'm really realizing more about myself because Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which is near my ascendant, which I see as more prominent. And it's taught this way too, that your ascendant is much more prominent than your sun sign. But the three most important, or it's not more important, but really they're all important, but prominent in the chart is your ascendant, your sun sign and your moon. But they're all important. And so on my ascendant, on near my ascendant is Uranus and Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. And so for me, this is why I see it's almost as if God is showing me that there are things coming to the forefront in my identity, especially with this eclipse happening and our identity being renewed and restored and new creations being formed through new identity by our core essence being healed and us going back and remembering our core essence so that we go back and remember who we truly are in the divine. Wow. And so with this Uranus rulership of Aquarian age, I just feel like the rest of my life is going to be dynamic and meaningful, special, and uh, marked in eternity. Um, and so, you know, Aquarius is rule is it, astrology is ruled by Aquarius. So as we are in the age of Aquarius, astrology is going to become more prominent. However, astrology is just another message of God. It's not uh, everything, and yet it is encompassed by everything. Does that make sense? Because all is connected and all is related to one another. But right now, through the age of Aquarius, astrology or the cosmic law, cosmic love, cosmic dance is becoming much more um, there's much more awareness about it. There's much more uh, interest about it. We're leaning into that because that is the message right now. And um, we are leaving the Piscean age, you know, <clears throat> and all that that was about. Um, so we have come to the end of the age, right? Jesus is quoted in the Bible as saying, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. And so we are experiencing the birthing of this Christ. We are experiencing the second coming, the coming of this Christ, and it is within us because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the divine. We are the cathedral, the house, the church, the jars with living life in us, the life of God. We are containers of God's glory and God's presence, not separated from, but literally one with the living God, one with, inseparable, never to be apart. And so this is our remembrance journey. Do this in remembrance of me, this communion. What is this communion that we do in remembrance? wow, those scriptures really are so much deeper than I ever understood them as an evangelical Christian. And why so many are sick among you in the body of Christ, which is dismembered, right? The dismembered body of Christ. Why? Why are so many sick among you? Deeper meanings to these scriptures. Anyway, getting back to Mars on Saturn is something blowing up. If it's blowing up today, it'll be blowing up maybe even worse tomorrow with that exact conjunction in Pisces. And so what do we do? We can either surrender, calm ourselves into a spiritual sacred place, not be a victim. We're not the victim, right? And 
we can surrender to the to the healing we can surrender to the healing but it's taking responsibility for our part in that path and surrendering on that path so that when mercury meets with the sun the next day whatever is being exposed and revealed after this eclipse window it's all part of the whole but this is the message right now what is being revealed um I really believe that we have to stop being victims. Um, if we continue to live in that victim mindset, we're going to go around the mountain and go around and around and around like the Israelites uh, story in the desert. And I just heard such a great esoteric, you know, teaching about that and how Exodus really is the old mind and um, the old nature and all of that. And of course, we see that in the scriptures, but the guy was so like, just blunt. And he's like, listen, the sun comes up here, it goes down there, it rises in the east, it sets in the west. You're not going to go around the same desert because you know where the sun rises and the sun sets. So these people didn't really wander in the desert and not go on this journey that they could have been there in 40 days or so. I, I think they could have been there in a week or I don't know, under a month, they could have made this journey. Um, no, it's, it's an esoteric story about the journey of our soul. And when we stay in the old man, we stay in the old identity, we stay in the old patterns, we stay in the old cycles, but this generation right now, we are being given the grace and the mercy, Mercury, we're being in the mercy for things to be revealed of old because they're coming to the fore and they're being shown to us so that we may remember and we may heal with all humanity. Our forefathers and mothers didn't do it for whatever reason. We're not going to blame them. We're not going to, you know, continue in the cycles of cursing them and blaming them because then we're going to continue that cycle on. And so we have to practice for forgiveness, right? We have to practice our own healing path. But, you know, I was looking at Pluto because Pluto is such a tremendous, powerful energy of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of transformation. And it does rule my sun sign, Scorpio. But Pluto is the power of transformation. It is the death and resurrection. It is that whole picture of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and being resurrected in resurrection life. And Pluto is that power, but there is no resurrection and unless there is death, right? And Pluto moves so slowly, but so precisely, and it, there is no escaping the death in order to receive the resurrection. But I was looking at Pluto in, because Pluto stays in certain signs for a while. Pluto was just in Capricorn from 2008 until this very year, it will make its last retrograde to Capricorn um, from September to November. And in November, it will finally leave Capricorn completely and <laughs> for a long time. Um, and it will move into Aquarius for till 2044. But so there you go. It stays in a sign for like 20 something years at least depending on retrogrades and stuff. So it's not always exact. But if we look back at Pluto generations, the generation that has Pluto in Leo, and I think they're kind of like our parents, my parents' age, that kind of generation has Pluto in Leo. Leo represents the heart. There is a, there's always a light side and a dark side, right? Of of every sign and every house and every message. There's a yin and a yang. Um, there's a, you know, I don't want to say bad and a good because nothing is bad or good. Everything is for our good, right? Everything is working out towards our good. But um, even the darkness, even the darkness. But the Pluto in... Leo generation, if you have Pluto and Leo, and I don't know the years that you were born, I just know like it's people that are like in their 70s right now. 
um, I think it was like 57 is the cutoff year. So 57 going back to the 40s um, to the year 1957. But um, if you are awakening and you have Pluto and Leo and there is like a, a humble path that you're on, you are probably very unique um, and called to this awakening path because I think that generation, the 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 weakness of that Pluto there in the sense of in coming through the energy is the pride not to awaken, the pride not to receive the truth, the pride not to repent, the pride to say it wasn't my fault. I think that starting with my generation, I think there's a lot of repentance happening. There's a lot of softening. There's a lot of, hey, you know what? I carried this iniquity. Hey, you know what? I did these things wrong. Hey, you know what? I need to tell my kids that I messed up. I think something happened after um, that Pluto and Leo, because it's the heart, you know, it's that hardened heart. Now I'm not saying I'm sorry. I don't owe my kids an apology. I didn't do anything wrong. It's everybody else's fault. And if you're from that generation where you have Pluto and Leo, if you're like, say, in your 60s or 70s, you have to look at your chart. Um, pray about that. Pray about that. There's a hardness of heart there. Um, but the next generation had Pluto in Virgo. And I think that um, that's where a lot of chemicals started coming into our environment, into our foods. Um, a lot of processed foods came in. And I think that that generation, which is my generation, Virgo is, is it was a lot of things, but it has to do with the body. And um, it also has to do with our everyday routine. I think, you know, the heavy energies there have to do with women had to work. The household had more stress with both partners working. I think we were opened up to a lot of um, sickness and disease because of uh, the chemicals in our environment and the things that were introduced to us. The next generation had Pluto in Libra, right? That generation is um, deals with a lot of um, relational. That's about significant relationships relational things came in because now there was woundedness that was passed down to that generation in significant relationships. Divorce came in. These were children, products of divorce, products of alcoholism. Um, this is where um, counseling and family therapy started because kids were messed up. Um, and so the wound there is is like the Pluto there has to do with significant relationship. Um, next generation was Pluto in Scorpio. That's when porn became a free for all on the internet. Just unbelievable. You know, Scorpio has to do with sexuality. It has to do with the root chakra. It has to do with, you know, a lot of things, but that I see that being the, you know, the death came in sexuality for that generation. There was no more purity. There was no more sense of, you know, I do I do a lot, you know, I'm part of a lot of groups online, not a lot, but a few groups online where these guys, you know, this is very open online. It's not some secret group or anything. These guys are just right on Twitter and they all talk about this openly and everything. You know, that's part of this generation too. Um, where communication is just very open in this um, age of Aquarius because of technology. So everything will be open. Everything will be a free for all. Um, but sometimes we won't know what is real. That's Pluto and Aquarius in this generation being born now. But um, anyway, that generation of Pluto and Scorpio has to do with losing their innocence to their sexuality. And um, it is heartbreaking to see these guys and girls literally online just saying help me please help me please help me I don't I don't know what it is to be sexually pure in my mind I I don't know what it is to make love to someone I don't know if I ever can I don't know if I ever can stop watching porn I you know apparently porn is um it's it's um oh there's a word for it 
when, you know, someone keeps opening up tabs because like it doesn't stimulate enough. So a tab is open and it's just not enough. So another tab has to be open and another and another and another and new visions and pictures have to come in and new videos have to come in because it doesn't, it either doesn't bring enough stimulation or it creates a dopamine um, wave that continues on and on and on through the neurosynapses of the brain where the dopamine can keep flowing and they can get a longer and longer high. And dopamine is the dopamine addictions that have been created through the internet. Um, it's it's insurmountable. It's uh, it's an it's a new addiction. It's the new addiction, and porn is one of them, which affects everything else because it accept, it it affects someone's identity, their body, um, their um, self esteem, their self you know image, self worth relationships, marriage, um, gender, confusion, all this stuff, you know, shame and religion and, and spirituality because of all the shame and the guilt and it affects people's time. They don't get their work done. It's just a, it's a huge pan and pandemic. Um, it's called a porndemic. I don't know if they call it that, but I call it a porndemic. And, uh, and what is so heartbreaking is to see how these young people who are now like in their thirties and twenties and teens are begging for help, begging for help um, because they want to get out. And I'm talking thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And it's beautiful to see the ones, I mean, uh, it's just so powerful to see these young men who literally are not married. They don't have girlfriends and they literally do not masturbate and they don't watch porn. Um, they learn how to, control their mind and use their body for um, meditation, exercise, pure, um, you know, just using their testosterone for, for building things in their lives, for building their dreams, for encouraging one another. And um, honestly, I think that generation, because of how deep and dark that addiction is, will be the generation that will become the most authentic. I don't think my generation will become the most authentic, although some of us will, but I think that generation will become the most authentic because the deeper, darker, you know, the the darkness, the the greater the the truth that will come forth. And so so there's the light side of it, you know. So Pluto and in, in Scorpio generation will become the most authentic generation, which will be extremely, extremely powerful. Um, and then, you know, we saw Pluto in, in Sagittarius and that has all to do with philosophy and we see religion breaking down in that generation. And I think that will be the first generation. And, um, what years were that? That was like, um, before 2008. So like the nineties up to 2008, whoever was born in the nineties and 2008, like that generation is letting go of all old philosophy or old religions. Like they're going to be the generation that does away with religion on the earth. And so I was just looking at the Pluto um, in all the different generations and seeing the themes of, Oh yeah, that's what happened in that generation. And that's what it's going to bring forth for humanity. So it's so beautiful and it's so powerful and there is no end to the layers and the quantum layers of what the cosmos reveals to us and it is God and the cosmos is God and it is us and it is inside of us and it presents to us truth, prof prophetic information, um, past information, ancestral information, arc, um, you know, ancient and ancient paths um generational paths uh akashic records just it it's it's never ending and i think this is just going to open up and what is funny is that i see um a few astrologers are beginning to go to christ and not that they're giving up astrology but they're going to christ and it's more of christ consciousness but um, not in a religious way and not in a new agey way. 
it's it's in a good way. It's in a, a, a really beautiful way. And um, it's in a mystical way. They're adding it to their spiritual path, which is beautiful. And so we're seeing this merging of like people that understand the cosmos and people that understand Christ and people that understand, um, you know, Indian, I don't want to say religions, but spiritual paths and Hindu spiritual paths that all have the same theme. And uh, it is for the good of all. You see, we do this for not just ourselves, but we do this spiritual path for ourselves, for our children, for our ancestors, and for all humanity. And that is the heart of God. And God has taken me out. Truth has taken me out of religion that separates me and a group of people from the rest of humanity. And I am in heaven and these people are going to hell. And that is just not part of my path anymore. It's not part of my path. It's not part of my mind. It's not part of my thinking anymore. It, it, it is, it has dissolved. That has dissolved. And that is um, beautiful for me to experience this new opening of God's heart in a whole new, expanded, beautiful way. And, and so we do this path. We take this soul evolution path for all. And none can be uh, none can be separated from the whole. We cannot be separated from the whole. Everything is in relationship to one another. We um, we had such a good uh, example of this the other day. I got a revelation of an example of how we can't be separated from the whole, and we all affect one another. But I can't think of it now, so I pray it comes back to me during this retrograde of Mercury. Um, but it was just a practical um, example. Anyway, it's been a long day. I've been doing a lot of driving, seeing patients, doing infusions, and uh, just did a workout. And uh, talked to some people today with things blowing up in their lives. And just, it's beautiful to be on a healing path together. And uh, to love one another, to pray with one another, to encourage one another, to speak the truth to one another, to challenge one another, and also to receive that from others. So this is where we're at. And uh, the next few days, I think, could be very intense, very revealing, um, and offer beautiful opportunities for us to surrender, mainly to surrender and to receive the information that's being shown to us that probably has not is not new information it's just we weren't ready to receive it but now we are we can the grace is there the mercy the mercury is there for us the mercy is there for us to receive it so um prayers and prayers of grace and peace be upon all of us and all of humanity as we move through these this next week and um, I will see you in the next one.